Hi everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. For today's video, we're going to be revisiting the Tandy 1000 again. Hopefully you guys aren't sick of it. And that's because I got something in the mail that should be pretty interesting. Let's get right to it. Yes, so Robert is working on a Tandy 1000 EX slash HX memory expansion board, kind of like the one I'm doing, but his is a lot cooler than mine. This is Robert's board, and what's really cool about it is, yes, besides using the same Alliance SRAM chip that I am, and he actually borrowed the decoding logic that I did on my design to map that extra 96K into the high memory space, or upper memory space, his board, as you notice, has a lot more stuff going on because it also includes a serial port right there, DB9, and a compact flash so this is essentially an XT-CF light, all integrated onto this one board. And there it is, there's the connector that goes into the Tandy. And I can see that he decided to use the slightly longer version. I think it's a 64 pin or something like that. And then he shaved off the extra pins. Now, he and I had a conversation about the compact flash card slot. And one of the difficulties is due to the limited space available inside the Tandy, it's hard to find a compact flash card slot that isn't super expensive. And that is also small enough to fit in the available space. So what he ended up doing, and it's a really smart idea, is he just added a 40 pin IDE connector and then he bought one of these very inexpensive IDE to compact flash adapter cards from China, which he was then able to cut a hole in and drill holes for the serial port. And then he just cut the edge off here for the top. And that sort of solves two problems in one where it adds the back metal plate and it's a very inexpensive way to get a compact flash card. And there we go, it's all in one. That is a really creative use of these very inexpensive adapters here. It saves having to surface mount the compact flash card directly onto his PCB, and then it saves having to deal with some type of a backplate. So besides wanting to borrow the decoding logic for the RAM, one of the other reasons Robert reached out to me was he wanted help with testing this board. He has a Tandy 1000 HX, and he was able to make sure that this board worked perfectly in his machine, but he does not have a Tandy 1000 EX. I luckily have both, so I absolutely offered to test for him and see if this works. Not to mention, what a kick-ass board this is. It really puts mine to shame. So let me grab my EX and let's pop this in along with an SRAM chip, see if this works. Here's the EX and it's ready to go. Now I have both my SRAM chips, the Chinese knockoff marginal ones, and then I have three additional of the brand new ones from DigiKey. So to give his board the benefit of the doubt, let's go straight for one of the real chips. In fact, this one's never been used because the pins aren't bent out. Populate this in. Move these out of the way and let's populate this into the Tandy. And there it is, it fits nicely. Now, one piece of feedback I would give Robert is it would be nice if there was a little mounting hole somewhere in the PCB so you could install a little standoff that would go from this left edge of the board down to the bottom of the case. And that's because this is really just flopping around in here, only being held up right now by the connector and nothing else. On the original cards that go into this machine, it has holes along this flat plate, which allow you to screw it into the back of the case here for support. Looking at the way that the slot cover mounts here, there's a little bit of a gap between the back of the case and the slot cover. So even if we drill holes in the slot cover, you wouldn't want to just cinch it down with screws, otherwise it would pull it tight and kind of bend everything out of shape. I suppose what could be done is I could just drill a little hole into the slot cover on the left side here and just put a screw in there and just not tighten it down, but at least that would give a little vertical support on the left side. Okay, the 1084 is connected. Let's turn on the Tandy. 640K, so we're looking good right off the bat. Ah, oh, look, and we have the XTIDE Universal BIOS showing up there. Amazing, that's just 
Fantastic. So I'm booting the Tandy off my DOS 6.22 disk that initializes the upper memory. This will work because the way Robert mapped the upper memory on the SRAM is exactly the same way that I did it on my board. So the config sys file that's on my boot floppy is actually just gonna work. So first it clears the memory. Actually, I have it starting at C000, even though it's actually starting at C8000. And here it is loading everything starting at C800. It's loading DOS and some drivers and other buffers and things into high memory or upper memory. So at this point we have 610 kilobytes free. I'm gonna use Check It to run some memory tests, some exhaustive tests on his card just to make sure everything is working well on the EX. All right, Check It finished testing the memory in the exhaustive memory test mode and it completely worked and checked out. Everything worked perfectly. So while we're in here, let's take a look at the Check It information. So like I said, 624K base and I have a V20 in my 1000EX. And big thing is right here, we have the serial port, COM1 available. And taking a look at the memory map, we see we have from C8000 to DFFFF, that's the 96K, where the SRAM is mapping into high memory. It's using the same logic that I was using on my memory board. Now odd is that from C0000 to C8 should be the ROM chip or the BIOS for the XT IDE, and it currently says nothing. Robert has the right enable pin connected to the flash ROM chip, and I'm wondering if it got erased when I booted and clear memsys wrote to the memory and erased that with zeros. Let's just edit the config sys and fix this so it stops trying to clear the part of memory where that ROM chip is. So here it is where I have it set to C000. We'll just change that to eight and write this to disk. So the ROM is still showing up. You see it's at C000, so I didn't erase it, which is a good thing. So strange, it's still showing up as nothing and not showing the option ROM there. Don't really get that. Using debug though and looking at C000, we can see the XT ID universal BIOS is right here. So everything is working normally as it should. I don't know what's going on with Check It. Well, let's check out this one favor compact flash card in this. I buy these from AliExpress. Yes, they're from China. They're very inexpensive and I have good luck with these working in all sorts of old computers. All right, so this card just goes in right here like this. Turbo Industrial CF card, thumbs up. Booting off the C drive. Wah, 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 it's not booting. I'm actually not sure what's on this CF card. It was stuck into one of these adapters I was using on one of my other computers. So I figured it's got DOS and whatnot on it, but I haven't actually checked it and it's not booting. So I'm gonna check it out. So I've been working on getting the compact flash working and look, I'm having a problem right here. But I actually don't think this is a problem with Robert's board or his design. That error happened on this card right here. I actually have several of these cards and I have no problems using them on 46s and Pentiums, things like that. But in my IBM 5150 and 5160, these also have all sorts of issues. In fact, they work so badly in those, they won't even boot. But in the Tandy, they seem to boot, but then I've been having all those freezing problems. I'm pretty sure that's related to this card in particular. So going back to the original card I tried that didn't boot, I checked it on my PC and it was blank. So that's why it didn't boot. So I have configured it, copied a bunch of stuff on there, put DOS on there. Let's plug this in, see what happens. Sweet, it's booting up perfectly. I have all sorts of utilities like Nancy, which is an ANSI graphics driver, cute mouse for the mouse, uh, 800K BIOS enhancers. This allows you to use larger disks. It's no use on this machine, but if you have a GoTech, you can create those two megabyte images and FastGraph, which is a BIOS, Tandy 1000 BIOS speed up routine. Good, we have 603K, so a little less than my 610, but it's because not everything loads high. I have Windows 3.1 on here, or 2.03, I'm sorry. Let's see, this takes a moment to load. But this is Tandy 1000 compatible. And there it is, the MS-DOS executive. Let's check out Paint. The original Paint, or one of the early versions of it. Aha, total copy of Mac Paint with these patterns. Interesting is I can't even find a way to change the color. 
Now, Tandy Graphics supports four color in the 640 by 200 mode. And you can see we got some other colors. We have white, we have blue for the background text, and then we sort of have a green color. Let's try Reversi here, which is a game. All right, so we got green, we got red. So you got a few colors, but it's funny. It's gotta be creative with the colors and because there's no black, everything has a kind of faded look. Test out Microsoft, right, using large fonts on a slow old computer. Let's load up some Deskmate. I have some funny colors configured that are sort of monochrome. Ah, oh, yeah, so this is working as well. Let's try Hangman. I think this is Deskmate 3.0 something or other. Adrian. I've got to say, this feels a little more sluggish than Windows does on the same exact computer. Please wait while a word is chosen. Wow, the machine is thinking very hard. I, the mouse pointer has disappeared even. Oh, look at that graphics. All right, S, nope, R, T, there's a T. I feel like a dummy here. I, I can't even figure out what word this is. What, what, what word, what's that? Eucalyptic, what? Okay, that's, that's crap. Let's try Prince, Prince of Persia. Nice, this is working well. Definitely a lot better than the version on the PC with CGA. Interesting, it had that nice tandy music, but yet the sound we're hearing now sounds like PC sound. Dexter. Don't have a joystick connected. This is my version that does this corruption. It does it on all. Yeah, the first version of Tetris, actually made in Russia. It's text mode, so this actually works on any PC. Whoops. <laughs> the control scheme is a little strange on this version. And I died. Let's try some word perfect. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice blue screen from the old Word Perfect. I have no idea how to exit out of this. It's like F, one of the F keys. You really need one of those little keyboard helper things. Save document, no. Exit, yes. Look at that, I actually remembered how to get out of it. In case anyone is interested, this is Top Bench, and it's showing rightly so that the Tandy is about the speed of an 8088 8 megahertz, which is what it is. Even though this has got a V20 in it, it doesn't seem to be getting any benefit in top bench. And now the Tandy is configured in slow speed by holding down F4 when you turn it on. Yes, 5150, V20, and a score of six, so it's less. Although SX is right there. Let's check out my Wi-Fi modem. I have this hooked up through a no modem cable because I have two of these. One requires no modem and one doesn't. And this happened to be the cable I just had lying around. But it's just plugged right into his card. Procrom Plus, AT. Okay, we're good, we're at 9600 baud. See if I got my dialing down, ATD out remer.fsx dot New Zealand. Oh yeah, look at that! Oh, I love this. Look, I just love how ANSI graphics look on, even on CGA monitors, the color is so vibrant and so nice. Vancouver, username, anonymous. Welcome new user. Let's take a look at the hard drive speed on Check It. I don't anticipate this to be very fast. This is an XT-CF Lite type interface, which means it's only using eight bits to the compact flash card, which can normally support 16-bit. IDE is typically 16-bit, but this is a special eight-bit mode that compact flash cards support. So let's see how fast this actually is. So 294K per second, 
Compared to a floppy drive, that is super fast, but it's pretty slow as far as things go. On a 5150 with an ISA card slot running in high speed mode, this is quite a bit faster on those machines. So Robert's done a fantastic job with this card. Everything I've thrown at it works. I think what we're gonna do now is throw one more thing at it and see if this works. The marginal China chips. Let's pop out this known good DigiKey chip first. And we'll just put in one of the random ones that I drew an X on. This is number two. All right, see how this works? Now we're testing on the EX and he is using an LS245 bus transceiver. And I think if I remember from my spreadsheet, all of these chips worked properly on the EX and this one appears to be. So I'm gonna bust out the HX and we're gonna pop this card in there and see if these chips work in that thing. Here's my HX, let's pop out my memory board. There it is. Let's pop in this new super fancy one. Perhaps if I plug the monitor in, it would work better. Let's, let's try that again. 640K. Ah, look, it's marginal in his board as well. So that really confirms that my design is fine and these chips are terrible. I still can't explain why those chips work in the EX and why they don't work in this though. That is a mystery to me. Having looked at the schematics of both machines, they are so similar on the motherboards, it makes no sense to me. So let's yank out this sketchy chip. Goodbye, China. And there, I just popped in the real thing. Let's make sure it's all aligned. Yes, it is, turn it on. No whammies, no whammies, ah, yes. Okay, wait a second, what just happened there? Why didn't it even boot the option ROM? It just went straight to the BIOS here. Okay, that's weird. The memory is working. Yeah, look at that. It didn't boot with the option ROM. It just went straight into the Tandy 1000HX here menu without that. So on this floppy, I have set up HX, which is sort of a BIOS configuration utility for the HX. Let's check that out. It's on the A drive here. Set up HX, there it is. So there's a little bit of a, of a boot menu and there's actually an EEPROM on this machine. There isn't on the EX. The EX doesn't have anything like this, but this does. Startup disk. I mean, I don't know, memory or disk. Maybe we have to change it to memory. That's it. There are no other options on here. So we'll just hit F1 to update and let's reboot. So I changed it so it shouldn't boot off the internal ROM anymore. And hopefully it means it'll boot to the option ROM that's on this board. Okay, look at that, it's doing it. So that's a trick there. If you use one of these or you use any device that has an option ROM and you wanna use it on the Tandy 1000 HX, you have to use Setup HX, which you can find online, to alter it so it doesn't boot from the internal ROM but instead boots from disk and then it will use the ROM. Yeah, I've just been playing around on the HX and everything seems to be working absolutely fine. This is Windows 2.03 again and it's fine. So after all that testing, I gotta say, Robert's board is pretty awesome. This thing adds pretty much everything you'd want for the Tandy 1000 HX and EX, zero port, compact flash, and the extra memory, including the upper memory. All right, so how can you get one of these boards for yourself? Now Robert is gonna be making this board open source hardware. And that means he's gonna put the schematics and the KiCad files and the Gerber files on GitHub for anyone to download if you wanna make your own PCBs but he's also planning on selling some completed kits. So for those who aren't technically inclined, you can just buy one and stick it in your computer without having to make it yourself. He's still working out the logistics of how he's gonna do that, whether it be eBay or through a partner or perhaps Tindy, but I'll put any information I know of down in the description, so check there. But I'll also put a way to reach out to Robert directly, so if you're interested in buying one of these, you can talk to him about how you can get one of these when this video is published. All right, that's gonna be it. If you liked this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you didn't, you know what to do, thumbs down. You can subscribe for more videos in the future and hit that little notification bell icon next to the subscribe button if you wanna be notified when I put up new videos. I'd love to hear your comments and suggestions down in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching, goodbye.